has a wife to live can bear almost any harm. Frederick Nietzsche. Why? Such a small but such a significant, unnerving word that can bring the most accomplished, most knowledgeable person to their knees. And as an individual, whether you're a student or a professional, you too, at some point in your life, will be asked the question, why? Why do you want to do this job? Why should we hire you? Did you feed your nerves then? Because why is such an important word in all of our lives. This sense of why came to me at a very young age because I was always inspired by my grandmother. And the surprising fact is that I have never met her. I don't know how she looks like and I often went around the house asking whether she looked like me. My grandmother lost her life at the age of 22, giving birth to my mother. She had given birth to her four siblings before that. And I often wondered, such a small span of life. I wondered if she was alive, would she also have ambitions and goals like me? Would she be driven like me? And sometimes I think, is it very important for us as human beings to have goals? Or is it like a human fantasy of us? Nevertheless, a team of researchers from the Harvard School of Public Health have found out that individuals with a higher sense of purpose or people that have goals and ambitions have shown a longer span of life and a healthier life. That is a good reason for all of us to think about having a purpose in our life. And to be very honest, during my college years, I used to spend a lot of time alone thinking about why am, am I here, what is my purpose and what I should be doing in my life. But it came to me in a very, in a very weird fashion. It came to me at a time that I felt that everything that happened really brought me to my purpose. And all that I had done subconsciously really led me to my goal. So these are the steps that I would subconsciously taken to help me reach my goal. And I hope they help you too. Step number one, move out of your comfort zone. I was born and raised in Kuwait. And I moved at the, out at the age of 15 to a new city like Bombay, where I didn't really know the people over there. I had no family and friends. I had absolutely zero life skills to survive. I could hardly wash my own clothes or make my own food. And I had no idea why I came here in the first place. Yes, I was very terrified in the starting. But soon and very gradually, I met people from different walks of life that taught me so much, that helped me learn how to drive a car on my own for the first time, start a business, something that I don't think I would ever think about. And that's what I want for you. Even if you don't have to leave your house like me, you can stay with your family. At the same time, I encourage you to meet new people with different experiences that inspire you to take up something in your life and to drive your passion. And even if you're an introvert that doesn't like to mix up, all you can do is read a lot of books because books really open up your personality and help you think in a much broader way. And you can always research on different subjects that can help you tickle your interest in a way. Step number two, make your own vision board. I know a lot of people find this very fancy, but this has always helped me. Year after year, what I pasted on that vision board came true. Whether it was representing India at Miss Universe, or uh, getting featured in Kingfisher, or even speaking at a TED Talk like this, it all came true. But if you still believe that this is some kind of hocus pocus, it technically really helps you because it gives you a clear idea of what you want to include in your life of the places you want to go to and of the experiences that you want to feel. And you can remove some things that don't really fit your purpose. Step number four, your attitude towards failures and difficulties. As humans, we tend to run away from a difficult period or from any kind of fear. And if you're just like me and you love reading astrology, I read only the positive parts and try to ignore the negative parts. But I've felt that everything in my life has always driven me to become a better person. It's all because of the difficulties and all the shortcomings that I had to face. 
whether it was not being able to get into a medical school even after studying for two years diligently without any distractions. At that moment, I was so heartbroken and I, I, I was so dejected. But today I realized that it helped me have a new perspective in life and I wouldn't reach it, that wouldn't happen. Or even when oh, my love, my child of a business that I created, putting all my life savings, completely go down in three months. At that moment, I felt such a failure. But today it made me realize that I, I had the, I had the risk-taking ability, which I would not recognize if that wouldn't have happened to me. So I think as humans, we need to be accepting of failure. And in schools and in colleges, they should teach more about failure because they don't tell you that even the best of the best and the legends have faced their own share of failure, whether it's an Abraham Lincoln that has seen so much before he became the president of the United States, or if it's Mary Curie. All these celebrities, all these big names have also faced their share of failure. So if you need, if you feel that you're not getting through because there's so much going around you, maybe it's a good sign. Step number three, eliminate the outer chaos. Steve Jobs said, don't let the outer noise silence your inner voice. And it holds very true. Sometimes we can come in between our own way and prove as a resistance by listening to the opinion of others. It can happen very easily. And it's something that you really need to take a stand on. I was always made fun for my speech because I had a lisp and a stutter from a very young age. People would not take me seriously and they never thought that I could make anything of myself because communication is such an important part of a person's life. But I did not listen to them because I never felt that there can be something that limits you as a human being. And I spent all the hours that I could trying to perfect the way I speak. It's not, not something that I'm obsessed about, but I'm constantly evolving and learning. And even with you, whatever difficulty comes in your path, make, it, make sure that you take it in your stride. This particular incident in my life kind of really shook me and taught me so much. As a student, I was in volunteering at the Tata Memorial Hospital of Cancer Research, and we were on a duty of taking care of all the children and on Children's Day, we had this particular event where we asked the kids what they would like to become when they grew up. There was this one particular child that came and said that when he grew up, he would want to be a doctor and cure the cancer of all the children around so that nobody has to live a life like him. And that really shook me and showed me the kind of courage and passion this tiny soul had in him. And I feel that really taught me to take everything that happened in my life in the stride and use it for a better and a bigger purpose. Never underestimate the power that lies in solitude. Meditation is very important in today's generation because there's a lot of noise inside and you need the quiet moment for yourself to listen to your inner voice. I had this habit of getting up really early in the morning around 4 o'clock so that I could experience sitting alone by myself and meditating to understand what is it that I really wanted from life. Nikola Tesla said that the greatest inventions came to him when he spent time alone. And I feel that's where you will find your true inner voice. If I think about it, my passion for standing up for the truth and for voicing for communities of farmers and LGBTQ community is something that really helped me develop myself and overcome my list. And that is exactly what I want for you, the youth of this country, that drives this marvelous nation to be inspired and passionate about something that drives you. I hope that all my life events causes a ripple in yours to an epicenter that is you.